Hi guys, let's have a discussion on today's set of questions. Um, have a pen and paper. Uh, it's always recommended that you write as much as you can. So here's today's question, uh, set of questions. Uh, according to MPEDA, which is Marine Products Export Development Authority. Please write this, Marine Products Export Development Authority. Okay, uh, according to this uh, agency, which is which is India's biggest export destination for our seafood. Uh, India is one of the world's biggest producer of fisheries. In fact, uh, we are among the seven biggest in the world. Um, you know, and cons considering that, um, you know, uh, there is a lot of domestic consumption, we still have a lot left over for export. And the total exports, marine exports last year were, you know, six, Point six billion dollars. This is the total. Total marine exports of India, six point six billion dollars. Uh, One billion here. If you want to put it this way, you make it this way. Okay, six thousand six hundred. Uh, you know, billion. Fair. So, uh, of these, the biggest, uh, you know, went to the U.S. About two point five billion dollars. Okay. 2.5 billion dollars um, which as you would say 2500 million dollars number two was China China's uh, a very hungry population when it comes to meat especially seafood uh, and there we will send stuff worth uh, 3. Uh, sorry 1.34 billion dollars Japan's um, the third largest market for Indian uh, seafood uh, we sent stuff worth uh, just about, um, you know, 0 0.4 to less than half a billion dollar, billion dollars, that's about uh, 422, sorry, 422, you know, million. So, not much, but you have to look at Japan. Japan is a pretty, you know, uh, large market when it comes to seafood you look at that you know overall it's a very large uh, seafood market and they have a large scale domestic production they go all over the world the japanese trawlers p-r-a-w-l-e-r-s trawlers means fishing trawlers they go all over the world you know to hunt for whales exotic fishes and all um but you know uh, of late uh, there is an issue with regard to you know with regard to Japanese demographics. Uh, if you look at Japan, uh, Japan's total population is um, you know total area is about 3.77 lakh square kilometers. I'm sharing this for reference basically how you know population could impact a country, and the population the air, the, the the population is about 12.3 crore. Okay, and that makes it the tenth biggest tenth most populous country in the world. But uh, to keep the population stable, one has to have a TFR, total fertility rate of 2.1. 2.1, that is, this is what is called population replacement level. Total fertility rate is the number of children a woman would have during her lifetime. It's an average, obviously, you can't have 2.1 babies, but it's an average. Okay, now one more thing is that uh, this is required and um, the average life expectancy in Japan is 89 years. That means that they have an extremely high life expectancy. Now, this is required, this is a life expectancy. So more and more people are getting older. Now we look at this, the current situation is such that um, the TFR is about uh, 1.3. It's about 1.434, make it the 1.3. So it's falling, that is, the number of babies being born in Japan is going down by the year which also means that the number of babies that will come into the world in Japan will be lower, will be smaller and they will. it will also mean that as the population grows older, fewer labor will join the market, the market tomorrow. Which means that, um, you know, the Japanese government will find it difficult to sustain the GDP. The country's economy will find it, sus you know, difficult to sustain the GDP. GDP. You know, you may talk about, well, what about uh, automation? What about, you know, um, what about uh, use of machines? Uh, one person, one machine could do the work of four. Still, there are certain capital, inter sorry, labor intensive industries, like, for example, service. Yeah. Uh, and uh, of course, certain manufacturing units like cars, 
like you know uh, nuclear power plants and all now if you look at japan um, more and more people are getting older and it has one of the oldest populations in the world oldest in the sense that oldest by demographics by age so things are going to get bad if the population rate this is likely to fall below one which means that will be less than one baby per woman in japan this would mean that by 2050 uh, japan's population is likely to be about um, you know 9.5 crore and by 2090 it is going to be around 4.7 crore so population is going to fall which also means that fewer people will join the labor force more and more people will get the get into you know old age they will leave the labor force the pressure to take care of social pressure in terms of old age homes or you know in terms of you know pension health care caring for the aged will take a toll on Japanese government finances. At the same time, its revenue base will decrease because a lot of manufacturing, a lot of companies, some service companies will shift overseas, you know, to establish plants where there is adequate labor supply. So the total overall government revenue in terms of both corporate tax, which is collected, you know, from on the income of companies and individual income tax will be good. So it's going to be pretty bad you know, for Japan. So in a large sense, um, you know, um, average age in India, for example, is quite very low. The average age in India, median age, not exactly average, but take it this way, is 27.8. So more than 50% of the population is, you know, less than 28 years old in India. But this is also growing in India. In China, it is about 37. Okay. And uh, there are countries like Serbia, where it is 43. A lot of countries are growing older, but we have a substantially large uh, domestic population, which is, um, which you can say, you know, uh, quite young. Okay, so when it comes to seafood, our biggest market is United States, followed by China and Japan. So U.S. almost takes one third of our total, uh, more than one third of our total exports. Which multilateral financial institution has approved a one billion dollar loan to support the construction of the hype speed Delhi Metro, sorry, Delhi Meerut Regional Rapid Transit System? Okay, now this is going to be the ADB Asian Development Bank. You see the you know uh, Asian Development Bank here in choice four. I would want you to write about Asian Development Bank, ADB Asian Development Bank. I am not going to discuss all, but maybe yeah uh, one two uh, it's headquartered in a place called manila which is the capital of a country called philippines okay philippines it's an island country in the Pacific ocean and um, it's it's big two biggest shareholders are japan and us yes yes it's called asian development bank but Japan and the U.S. governments have substantially large, larger stakes, followed by you know um, India and China. But they are much larger, smaller compared with you know uh, Japan and the U.S. And its president is a guy called Masat sorry, Masat Sugu Ayakawa. Masat Sugu Ayakawa. Hmm. Masatsugu Ayakawa. He's from Japan. He's from Japan. Typically, the head of the ADB has been a Japanese. Like the head of uh, the World Bank has been, by tradition, an American. And the head of uh, the International Monetary Fund, it's been what? A European. These are traditions. Okay. Now, we could uh, look at one more. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, no. Uh, let me erase the zinc and asia so new number two new development bank new development bank a uh, new development banks uh, headquartered in shanghai it's headquartered in shanghai new development bank ndb shanghai which is in again china as you know this is in china it's headed by its new president is a guy called uh, you know, Marcos, sorry, Marcos
Roy Jones. Hum? Isso é um Brasil. Brasil. Marcos Roy Jones. He is the new president and um, this uh, is also called um, BRICS Bank. BRICS Bank. Okay. So we have taken a load. Uh, uh, please understand that uh, this is a 82. This particular thing is a 82.5. Sorry, I'm so sorry. 82.5 kilometers you know stretch 82.5 kilometer stretch and you know what um, it is going to cost some 30,000 crore rupees 30,000 crore likely to be ready by 2025 this is going to take um, the, it's going to cut the travel time between Meerut and um, Delhi by substantial number so today it takes about three hours two and after three hours it's going to be about 62 minutes it's going to take 62 minutes so 82.5 kilometers 82 kilometers is a stretch david and daddy and mirrored um, this entire mass transport transit system is going to be built at a cost of about 30,000 crore rupees and um, it's going to reduce uh, the travel time substantially okay likely to be up and ready by 2025 2025 um, from there, I think um, that should be fine. Shall we write about the ECB? We have never written anything about the ECB. You could write this. Um, European Central Bank. European Central Bank. European Central Bank. Headquartered in a place called, in a place called Frankfurt. Where is this Frankfurt? Germany. Frankfurt, Germany. Now, you know what? Uh, this is headed by President uh, Christine Lagarde. Christine Lagarde. She's from France. She's from France. Christine Lagarde is ex MD of the IMF, International Monetary Fund, but currently she is the president of the European Central Bank. Okay. Um, see, in some Indian media outlets, uh, people have, I have, some students have got in touch with me regarding this, you know, they, they asked me, you know, how is it that we can do this? I mean, the news report, they shared this news report wherein they, the Modi government has accepted uh, the news report, okay? And that they have borrowed from China, from a China bank, uh, you know, even in the midst of the standoff. Look, it's not from the government of China that we have borrowed, no. We have borrowed from what is called, um, you know, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and India is a shareholder in this. Okay, so we are own. We are a shareholder means you have contributed the capital. When you have contributed the capital, you own the bank. You know, you are a co-owner. So effectively, we are not taken from the government of China. We have taken from a bank of which we are a shareholder. Okay, so Asian in Investment, sorry, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank is AIIB. AIIB, if you want to write, you could write this, AIIB and it's headquartered in Beijing, Beijing, which is the capital of China. It's headed by a person called Li, sorry, his full name, Jin Likun, he's from China, Jin Likun. So, Asian in Infrastructure Investment Bank is headed by Jin Li Kun, headquartered in Beijing and India is a shareholder. So, we have borrowed from the AIIB and this has been, uh, this particular thing has been in the, you know, we have been negotiating for this loan for a long time, not, you know, in the, you know, after the border skirmish had started, even if it had started, you know, uh, even if it were a case of, you know, borrowing, we are not borrowing from the government of China, we are borrowing from 
a bank in which India is a shareholder. That's always okay. So this is what I wanted to tell you because Indian media, see, we believe in sensationalism. People don't know the truth. People don't want to find the truth, and it's unfortunate. It is quite unfortunate. So, which of the following institutions has topped the Times World University Rankings 2021? See, Times World University Rankings. Well, it's been um, topped by. University of Oxford, what is people call it Oxford University, that's the one, you know, Britain, uh, UK, United Kingdom. Number two is Stanford. You can write the top five rankings if you want. I can give you that list. So, you number one, the world's best, um, they have a lot of parameters. In fact, um, if you want to write the parameters, you could write this first item Times World University Rankings 2021. First, write that. Okay, then you underline that and write uh, uh, ranking parameters, ranking parameters, ranking parameters. So ranking parameters included um, teaching, there are five actually. So one is teaching, okay, two research, this is very very important for university research. Three, international outlook. So what quality of students, what quality of teachers, what quality of research staff they have. So teaching, research, international outlook. And uh, four is um, what is called citations. Citations. So when research is published by, you know, um, these guys, students here, the research is here at these universities. Uh, how often that is that quoted in other research papers? So this called citation. And um, there was one more. Yeah, industry revenue. Industry revenue. So industry outlook or industry revenue. So industry revenue is like consulting. So the profs here would consult with. It's called consulting with companies. Let's say a particular company approaches the professors here and see. We look. We need this. We are building this, we, are do, we want to do this, how do you think we should do this? So they seek advice. So consulting is about seeking advice. So a lot of revenue comes to the university through this. So these are the five parameters on the basis of which these rankings were arrived at. And the world's best is, um, you know, Oxford. Uh, Oxford is one, okay, one. Two is Stanford, three is Harvard, four is Caltech, five is MIT. Uh, those of you not greatly comfortable, you can see that Caltech is California Institute of Technology. California Institute of Technology. Caltech. It's top class, seriously top class. California Institute of Technology. And then we have Massachusetts. I'll spell it for you. It's quite tough to spell this. Massachusetts Institute of Technology, US. See, out of 19 out of top 20 are either from, you know, uh, are either from uh, America, yeah, you know, are from either from America or UK, and one is from, I think, um, Switzerland. That's it. 19 out of 20 and one the 20th rank is a Chinese university named Xinhua. Xinhua. This is a 20th rank one. Okay. I went through the entire rankings list on what parameters they ranked the top 20 there and uh, in the PDF they have they have rankings of the top 20 and then they followed up with um, you know uh, they followed it up with um, why they are ranked all the parameters exceptional parameters they have all these five the weightages for each of these and all that hmm? Chalye. so not a single indian one in the top 20. Esther film tech a subsidiary of Esther industries will set up an advanced polyester film manufacturing facility in telangana as announced by its chairman arvind singhania arvind singhania okay this guy is i mean this company is setting up a uh, Billy, you know, something like 1500 crore plant in Telangana. But who are these guys? Let's look at the choices. Um, the choices are like Subhash Chandra. 
Subhash Chandra, my friends, he is the chairman of SL Group. SL. He is chairman of SL Group. Okay. Siddharth Lal. Siddharth Lal is the head of Escorts, which makes Royal Enfield. Then Vikram Kirloskar is the vice chairman of Toyota Kirloskar. Toyota Kirloskar Motor. Vice chairman of Toyota Kirloskar Motors. Gautam Adani, as you would know, is the chairman of uh, Adani Group. Adani Group. Hmm. Who is the chief minister of Telangana? K. Chandra Shekhar Rao. K. Chandra Shekhar Rao. Telangana's chief minister is K. Chandra Shekhar Rao. This is India's youngest state. Youngest state. This is formed in June 2014. Yeah. Andhra Pradesh cannot be said to be the youngest, uh, you know, because um, it was already there. There was a state called Andhra Pradesh. So the name counts here. This, there was a state called Andhra Pradesh since 1956. So there was no state called Telangana before 19, before 2014. So these are the you know things that I want to tell you. Okay, from here, the International Day of Charity is observed on September 5th, which is also incidental in India, Teachers Day. Teachers Day. It's celebrated in honor of the great philosopher teacher, Dr. Sarvepalli Radha Krishnan. Okay. Um, Incidentally, Dr. Sarvayapalli Radha Krishna was the first Vice President of India. The first Vice President of India. September 16th, my friends, is the World Ozone Day. World Ozone Le Day. Sorry. World Ozone Day. September 16th, World Ozone Day. Then, October 24th is UN Day. United Nations Day. On this day, in 1945, the UN was established. This is the Braille day. Uh, this is the birthday of uh, Louis Braille who created a script for the visually challenged. So Braille day. October 30th is Rastriya Ekta Divas. Sorry. I'm sorry guys. Rastriya Ekta Divas. And this happens to the birthday of the great Sardar Vallabhai Patel. Sardar Vallabhai Patel, who was born on uh, 31st October 9, sorry, 1875, and he passed away on 15th December 1950. 1950. And remember, he was India's first Home Minister, first Deputy Prime Minister, first Commander in Chief. Of the Indian Armored Forces, yes, he was the commander in chief. With you know, after his death, the function of being commander in chief passed to the president, but till his you know uh, death, he was the commander in chief of the Indian Armored Forces. So his birthday is being celebrated at Rashtriya Ekta Divas because he was instrumental uh, in bringing together a lot of princely states into India. Uh, he is called the father of India's integration, political integration. And October 31st also happens to be the death day of Indira Gandhi. She was assassinated on this day in 1984. Which organization transferred about 57,000 crore as surplus to the central government for the accounting year, I mean, the, for the last financial year, uh, last accounting year? The RBI's accounting year is quite different from July to June, July to June. Please remember, RBI's accounting year is July to June. Uh, it was RBI which kind of gave this money because um, the government is squeezed for money because of poor economic conditions. It hasn't had it pretty good revenue inflow, so they've been 
asking RBI, you already have 3 lakh crore plus, why did you give a little to us? Yeah. So that's how it is. It's not so simple, of course, as you know. You know, um, we'll look at the choices. Um, you know, Coal India Limited choice four. Coal India Limited is Pramod Agrawal. Pramod Agrawal for Coal India Limited. Okay. Um, for IOC, it is um, what is his name? Shrikant. Shrikant Madhav Vaidya. Shrikant Madhav Vaidya. Vaidya, you can say Vaidya also. And ONGC Sashi Shankar. Sashi Shankar. Okay. I'm sure you will be familiar with all these things. You know, the RBI governor is uh, Shaktikanta Das. It was established in 1934-35 and uh, the RBI was nationalized in 1949. Nationalized in 1949. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Uh, with which company has Atal Innovation Mission of Niti Ayo collaborated to launch student entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship program 2.0 for young innovators of utter tinkering labs. The technology, you know, uh, I mean, what are, are mentioned? Two are manufacturing companies, one and four are manufacturing companies, especially four. Okay, it manufactures computers and all that. It is a pioneer in what we call direct retail. The laptop I am using is a Dell laptop. Now, it is not purchased from a store. You can purchase it from a store, but Dell has what is called a direct, you know, direct sale, uh, sales uh, channel, wherein you can simply call up the company and buy it directly from the company. And that's, that way, the price of the unit also goes down because the middleman's profit shop from where you buy and all isn't there. Okay, and you can customize your computers. Um, Dell is uh, run by this man called Michael Dell. He is the chairman, right? Chairman and CEO, Michael Dell. Michael Dell. Michael Dell. M I C H A E L. Michael Dell. If you want the head office of Dell, I can tell you where is it headquartered. Dell is headquartered in a place called Round Rock. Um, in the American state of Arkansas. Okay. Round Rock, Arkansas. The last S is silent usually. Arkansas. Okay. This is headquartered here and it's it was founded and it's still it's a private company now. Okay. It's run by this man called Michael Dell. He started his company's this dormitory. Yeah. Hostel room. And today the sales are about 92 billion dollars. That's close to something like 7 lakh crore rupees. 7 lakh crore rupees is the sale of this company. Uh, HCL Hindustan Computers Limited. Okay, so this is uh, run by a man called C. Vijay Kumar. C. Vijay Kumar. This company was founded by, mainly founded by a man called, this guy is Nadar, okay? Shiv Nadar is a founder, remember, Shiv Nadar is a founder, he's a co-founder, but you can say he's a founder. And CEO, this guy is CEO. Vijay Kumar is the CEO. And the best part is, you know, this guy is called the father of Indian hardware, computer hardware industry or Indian hardware industry. Um, the father of India's computer industry, you could write. Father of India's computer industry. Hmm. Uh, someday I will tell you the story. You see, we don't have the time to discuss these things, but I love these kinds of stories. How these companies are founded and all. Okay, like uh, Infosys, um, you know, was founded by seven persons: N R Narayan Murthy, Nandan Nilkani, uh, N S Raghavan, Kis Gopal Krishnan, Ashok Arora. Uh, you know. 
T Dinesh and S D Shibula. Okay, these guys started the company in 1981 and 89 Ashoka left. 91 the company became a public limited company, and uh, today the company's CEO is Salil Parekh. Salil Parekh. Okay, Infosys. Mind Tree is uh, part of L and T group. L and T group. It's headed by a guy called Debashis Chatterjee. Debashish Chatterjee. Okay. LNT Group CEO is Debashish Chatterjee. Uh, see, you can, sorry, P R I K H. <laughs> this guy, Vipro's um, CEO is um, Theory Delaport. Theory. De La Porte. Is a scene. Check it. Look, so much has come. You just have to explore a bit here, a bit there. You get a lot of good stuff. And you know, Niti, Niti is National Institution for Transformation of sorry, National Institution for Transforming India. National Institution for Transforming India. Okay. And the CEO of, see the chairman of Niti Aayog is always the Prime Minister of India. Whoever is the Prime Minister of India, ex officio becomes the chairman of the Niti Aayog. Okay? But on a day to day basis, the company, the, sorry, the organization is run by the CEO, who's current, uh, the current guy is Amitabh Kant. Amitabh Kant, who is the CEO of Niti Aayog. Niti Aayog. Which of the following organizations launched, uh, have launched, sorry, artificial intelligence setup modules for school students nationwide? The answer is there, A and B. Um, we just write the full forms of these and take the heads of these organizations. Okay. Uh, NASCOM is the national, you write, national association. National, I, it doesn't make for sense for me to write this. So, right, national association for software. National Association of Software and Service Companies of Software and Service Companies of Software and Service Service Companies Dash President President Deb Jani Ghosh Deb Jani D E B J A N I Deb Jani Ghosh this I can write for you. Dev Jani Kosh. Mm. This is the Confederation of Indian Industry. Let me spell it for you. Confederation of Indian Industry and its chairman is uh, Uday Kotak. Okay. Uday Kotak. This is FIKI. FIKI is uh, Federation of Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. It's headed by Sangeeta Reddy. Sangeeta Reddy. Apollo Hotel Group. Oh, sorry, Hospital Group. Okay. This should work. Um, sorry, I'm using this now. So, the chairman of the national.
National Solar Energy Federation of India has become the first Indian to head Global Solar Council based in Washington DC, United States. I am not going to discuss this question much. Uh, Pranav Mehta. Pranav Mehta is uh, you know the chairman of uh, NSEFI. I just want you to know there is something called the Washington, Washington DC. There should be a comma here but you know Washington DC is District of Columbia. Said to be named after Christopher Columbus, and uh, this would be so this is what is called a federal district. Okay, this is directly controlled by the government of US. So America has 50 states plus one federal district. Hmm? This is it, one federal district. So, I just wanted to discuss this, nothing more than that, okay. In India, solar power contributes to about 7% of total energy production, yeah, total energy production. The biggest chunk of our production, energy production comes from thermal power plants, thermal power plants use uh, coal, yeah, and I mean 70%, nearly 70% comes from thermal power plants. Which of the following is an important banking function covered under section 6 of the Banking Regulation Act 1949? All of them. So banks, they, they, they remit, they discount bills. So we have got a bill, this bill of discount. We can go and tell the bank that I have this thousand rupees thing. I need money urgently. So they cut the interest or some charges and they give us 950 kind of thing, let's say. Mm -hmm. Safe custody of articles, lockers, conducting foreign exchange transactions, it happens through them only. And any kind of central state governments typically pass through, you know, uh, public sector banks. But normally, almost all private sector banks also these days do all these things. Yeah, central, they, 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 uh, they have uh, a lot of central and state government transactions passing through them. The Institute for Development and Research in Banking Technology has designed and deployed Dash for interbank transactions. See, inter means the word inter means, you know, the word inter means between. It means between. But if you find the word intra somewhere, it means within. It means within. Remember this, okay? This is inter, between banks. So, intra bank means within the same bank. ATM, the full form is Automated Teller Machine. Hmm? Automated Teller Machine. Teller is the name of a banking functionary who would in the past give us all details of our bank account. He would tell us. So, he was a teller. Okay, now the machine does it. And it's programmed to operate like that. That's why it's past tense automated teller machine so the idrbd is in hyderabad it's owned by the rbi so owned by rbi okay you could write idrb owned by rbi and head office in hyderabad mm, hyderabad and if you want to write about what is this nfs please write this write the full form of nfs Sorry, uh, write the simple line definition. Um, largest network of shared SHA RED shared ATM small s no apostrophe. Okay? Please write like this only. Shared ATMs in India. Largest network of shared ATMs in India to connects around 2.5 lakh ATMs. Don't you think that's a very large number? Connects around 2.5 lakh ATMs. Next. Development developed in 2004, developed in third point, developed in 2004 to network all ATMs 
to network or ATMs and facilitate and this is spelling of the word facilitate banking convenience or convenient banking convenient facilitate convenient banking okay so today you could go to any bank atm and withdraw money or you know whatever you wish to know the balance make a deposit all that stuff could happen here but in the past this was not possible this was not possible if i had I had an account with let's say x bank i had to go to the x bank atm only to be able to transaction transact but now i can walk into any atm uh, you know a kiosk and uh, do stuff you know this life has become easy that's what called convenient banking um i think um, there's one more here no i think that's it who won the formula 1 2020 italian grand prix formula 1 is this uh, advanced motor racing um italian grand prix is typically held in a place called monza what is this place called monza and uh, this time it's been won by pierre gasly in fact the top three are all new names yeah they haven't this is the first time they've won anything they have been in the top three but this was number one number sains was number two and stroll was number three hmm? this guy drew, uh, is from france just read right only about this guy pierre gasly is from france and he drove he belongs to a team called alpha yeah alpha T touring alpha touring honda in some places you'll find alpha touring yeah both are fine don't worry depending on what you're reading alpha touring honda the engine comes from honda okay this guy is lewis hamilton he is a six time world champion popular one champion he's a current world champion six world championships and current world champion he's from britain he's from britain he drives a mercedes i love formula one i watch a lot of this stuff but this year has been quite a dampener because almost no audience is around that's sad Whose candidature has been approved by the RBI as a managing director and CEO of South Indian Bank for a period of three years with effect from 1st of October 2020? It's Murli Ramakrishnan. Murli R.K. Ramakrishnan. Murli Ramakrishnan. And, um, you know, uh, I'm running short on time, guys. So, who are these choices? You know, let's write about the choices as well. Um, Raj Kiran Rai, Union Bank of India. Raj Kiran Rai. Uh, we so Union Bank of India you could write Union Bank of India Atul Goel I think United no idea Yuko Bank yeah it's always confusing because they all of almost all of them have Union or United somewhere in between this guy is the interim CEO of interim CEO of Lakshmi Vilas Bank. Interim CEO Lakshmi Vilas Bank. And uh, Dr. N. Kamakodi is the CEO of City Union Bank. Cub it's called. City, City Union Bank. That's why I was, you know, looking down as to, you know, which of these. Look at the one, two, five. Almost all of them have Union or City somewhere. <laughs> yeah? That's a bit confusing. Hmm. Okay. Who won the 48th annual World Open Chess Tournament? Uh, this tournament is typically held in a place. See, this time it's been online, but it is normally held in Philadelphia, which is in the US, on the East Coast. Philadelphia, US. But normally, you know, while it's held there, this year it's it's been online. And it's been it was won by Indian. Okay. Uh, 
and um, you know uh, about you know, 122 countries participants had, uh, 122 participants had come from about 16 countries which is phenomenal for an online program hmm? online tournament but anyway india is a super power when it comes to chess because of the presence of these guys Pragnananda is world class hmm? kartikeyan kaushik sir in all of them actually some of the following persons has been elected chairman of the PTI, the country's leading news agency, Avik Sarkar. Who is this guy? You could write this Avik Sarkar. Um, you know, uh, editor emeritus. Editor, yeah, yeah, they have their own funny name, titles. Editor emeritus of Anand Bazar Patrika. Anand Bazar Patrika. Anand Bazar Patrika. So from there, you know, uh, generally considered to be a little anti-rightist, anti-rightist. So, see, media in India is biased, just as the case, as the case everywhere in the world, except in China, where everything is controlled by the government. So all media is pro-government. Okay, but um, in a democracy like ours, people are different; they think differently. Okay. Uh, look at for example Vinit Jain. Vinit Jain my friends uh, is um, the vice chairman or you could say yeah he is the vice chairman of Bennett Coleman and Company. Bennett Coleman and Company that's Vinit Jain. This company owns Times of India typically most times that happens. Times of India, film fair they own. Hmm? Now Bharat Times, they own a lot of newspapers, a lot of newspapers. So, very powerful person. Vivek Goenka, look at choice three. Vivek Goenka is uh, the chairman of uh, Indian Express Group. Indian Express Group. Indian Express Group. Endram is the head of, he is the chairman of Kasturi and Sons. Kasturi and Sons. This is the publisher of the Hindu paper. The Hindu newspaper. This, uh, see, for example, this guy is a communist. Okay, he is, he is a former member of the Student Federation of India, SFI. And he's a communist, so if you, you when you read the Hindu, you will know that it is deeply anti BJP. No, I mean, just you know, once you know the background of the people who run the show, it's easy to you know know who's what. For example, when you look, watch Arnab Goswami's Republic TV, you know that the guy is pro out and out pro BJP. So, you know what, once you know who's the person running the show, you would know what the tone these you know the publications or the news channels will adopt okay um, Sham Saran is an ex foreign secretary of India you could write one book he's right he's written how India sees the world how India sees the world how India sees s e e s sees the world Dash, dash, Kautilya to the 21st century. Kautilya to the 21st century. Kautilya, Miss Chadakya, to the 21st century. So from that time, about 400, when, you know, 4th century BC, 4th century, sorry, 4th century uh, BC, you know, he was there. When the, he was the instruct guide, philosopher, mentor of uh, Chandragupta Maurya, who, who built the Mauryan Empire, who laid the foundation of the Mauryan Empire in 321 BC. Okay, so that's 321 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. So you need to look at this 300 then, and after that 2020. So that's about 2340 years. Though 2340 years. Since that, today, how India has seen the world. That's the story of the book. Who is the current Foreign Secretary of India? The current Foreign Secretary of India is 
हर्ष वर्धन आई एम सो सॉरी माई फ्रेंड्स हर्ष वर्धन श्रृंगला इन सब प्लेसेस यू फाइंड दैट ही राइट्स इज नेम एज हर्ष सेपरेटली यू नो सेपरेट फ्रॉम वर्धन सो दैट्स ओके Appointments Committee of the Cabinet has appointed S. Krishnan as Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Punjab and Sindh Bank. Punjab and Sindh Bank, and this is uh, sorry. Uh, oh, I always get confused about these things. Okay, guys, here Padmaja Chunduru, Padmaja Chunduru, Padmaja Indian Bank CEO is Padmaja Chunduru. Okay. Here we write Partha. IOB is run by Partha Pratim. Okay, Sengupta. Partha Pratim Sengupta. Canara Bank CEO is. लिंगम वेंकट प्रभाकर और एल वी प्रभाकर एल वी प्रभाकर सेंट्रल बैंक ऑफ इंडिया पल्लव मोहपात्र पल्लव मोहपात्र पल्लव ठीक है India beat Poland and uh, Russia beat uh, US, the US. But in the end, ultimately these two ended up draw joint winners, joint winners. So I think in the previous classes we had learnt about you know Ukraine and Iran, especially the country, the capital, the leader, and the currency. Anything else that you would want to know? Ukraine, Iran, no. Oh, Serbia. Yeah, Serbia. You can write. Serbia is in Europe, and it's a former constituent of. It was a province in the country called Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia broke up, and this province became an independent country. Um, the capital of Serbia is Belgrade. 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 Uh, the prime minister is Anna. Brand page. This is the right spelling. Yeah, yeah. P R N A B I C. She is the Prime Minister. The currency is dinar. Currency is dinar. It's in Europe. You know, I was reading about this country. I have long been reading about these kinds of countries which are vulnerable, which are not doing well. you know because of conflict over the years and because of lack of economic growth a lot of young people in this country have left the country yeah which has meant that a lot of old people are left behind and serbia has one of the oldest you know populations demographically the average age of you know in serbia is 42.9 they think 43 I mentioned India is about twenty-seven point eight. That's median, whereas here it's about forty-three. Considerably old, isn't it? Very, very old. And that also, and I was also reading about this that one fourth of the country, one fourth of the country's households, means twenty-five percent of the country's households, have just one member. One, one, one man or a woman. That's it. One. So twenty-five percent of the households have just one person, and um, two-fifths of the country's population has 
um, households have four or more, four or more, just about 40. So, I mean, these countries are, this country is not doing well. This country is not doing well. I mean, we, I, in the beginning, I discussed uh, demographics of Japan. So, you can see here also, it's the same case. This rich country has the UN cabinet recently approved a memorandum of uh, understanding for cooperation in the field of good quality textiles. Japan. Japan. Yeah. Uh, Japan's, uh, you could write new prime minister, very important chap. Just write, let's write the prime minister in this case. Japan's prime minister is um, Yoshi Hide Suga. Yoshi Hide Suga. Yoshihide Suga, Japan, and you know the capital is uh, Tokyo, and the currency is uh, yen. Currency of Japan is yen. New Zealand's capital is Wellington. Wellington. And the Prime Minister is this lady called Jacinda. Okay, 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 guys. Yeah. Well, uh, let me write just here, Jacinda Ardern is a Prime Minister of New Zealand, okay, and currency is dollar, New Zealand dollar, they don't have this symbol, they call it dollar, New Zealand dollar. Egypt is an African country, uh, the capital is Cairo or Cairo and uh, the president is a guy called Abdel Fateh El Sisi you can double check this okay Abdel Fateh El Sisi he is a president he is a dictator he is ex military chief and uh, the currency is pound Egyptian pound Egyptian pound Hmm. Hmm. Then we can write about Cambodia, but um, let's write Cambodia. Cambodia is again, you know, um, it's a Buddhist country east of India. India. You have immediately Myanmar, next to it you have Thailand, next to it you have Cambodia on the coast. Okay, um, the capital is Phnom Phen. Phnom Phen. And the Prime Minister is Hun Sen. This guy is a dictator. He is a favorite of China. Anyone who is a dictator must be a favorite of China, isn't it? Yeah. Because the dictators don't have accountability. There is democracy, but it's all farcical. Recently, a, you know, an opposition leader was killed. He has been the PM for about 30 years. And the currency of this country is real. Hmm. This is a constitutional monarchy. There is a king here called Narodom Sihomani. He is a king, but anyway, the king is not important. Indonesia is, uh, I think we took notes on Indonesia in the past. Um, the, the capital is Jakarta. And the president is Joko Widodo. Joko Widodo. Joko Widodo. And the currency is Rupia. The currency is Rupia. Rupia. That's the currency. I think we took notes from Indonesia in the last classes, last couple of classes. So, which of the following nations hosted the G20 group of 20 foreign ministers extraordinary meeting on September 3rd, 2020? Saudi Arabia, of course, this is, uh, you should understand that this is a virtual meeting. People didn't go to meet. Hmm? But hosted by Saudi Arabia because the chair. chair. Okay. Um, Anything you would want to know? I think we've been discussing this, but just for fun, yeah, um, we could write Saudi Arabia, 
the king is sorry the capital is uh, riyadh the capital is riyadh and uh, the king is named salman his king his son is a crown prince after him uh, muhammad bin salman mbs okay and then the currency is riyadh so saudi arabia capital is riyadh king salman is a monarch and the currency is riyadh you see it's easy to remember r i y r i y okay i think we've been discussing this uh, i'll just mention brazil also uh, the president is important here president jair bolsonaro he is a president okay he is called the trump of south america yeah the trump of brazil the trump of south america in the following awards is popularly called the green oscar whitley award whitley award is given by a society in the uk actually okay so you look at um, champions of the earth award it's a un award champions of the earth is un's highest environmental prize champions of the earth in 2018 prime minister modi okay uh, prime minister modi and the french president emmanuel macron had won 2018 may not now 2018 this is again uh, it was not it's not related to goldman sachs okay it's by a husband and wife team you don't have to write this robert and uh, you know roda r o c o d a roda they they together established this price robert goldman and roda goldman they you know they 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 established this price so put it the price um, you could say because this is important for me. right given by columbia university given by columbia university in the fields of print and electronic media print and electronic media music photography and in the more yeah literature ah yeah there are some books which have won the booker prize ah sorry <laughs> the pulitzer prize like there is this book called problem from hell by samantha parks it won the pulitzer prize for non fiction in the non fiction category so literature they have fiction and non fiction so they have photography awards for photography best photography best breaking news photography best story photography all that stuff okay um this is you could write the international union for conservation of nature iucn is the international union for conservation of nature international union for conservation of nature Thanks for being here. Please make sure you work hard, my friends. Build a better future than you have today, than the one you have today. Make sure that you keep your mind open and learn everything that you are interested in. Anything that will help you build a a great future. Thanks for being here. Have a lot of fun. Stay curious.